Hi everyone, I just wanted to give you a couple of quick tips to get started on your homework um, with the glue data. So uh, what I've done is I'm going to go ahead and plot some of the Gaia field stars using the file that's on E-Class. And we've worked with this data before. We can create a nice 2D scatter plot uh, showing that we have um, Hertzsprung Russell diagram this is all familiar. See, there's the effects of extinction. So I can use my arithmetic attributes to um, correct those for dust. So we're good with that. Let's do that. Minus the effects of dust. So that's all in there. Cool. We can do the same thing for uh, VR corrected. And uh, that's the color minus the reddening. Put that all in there. Okay, uh, that's good. Uh, and so we could plot those two things. You'd sort of see a Hertzsprung Russell diagram without the effects of dust extinction in it. So all familiar everything that's good there uh, but what i want to do now is consider the structure of the uh, galaxy in terms of the actual spatial coordinates so what i'm going to do is actually unproject the spherical system that we have into an xyz system so we have a z gal and we're going to use this uh given how we would get two polar angles we have those those are the galactic longitude and the galactic latitude of the stars. So what I'll do is I will turn this Z gal is the radius, that's for us the distance, uh, which is a thousand over the parallax. And uh, I'm gonna multiply that by the cosine of, uh, oops, sorry, I'm gonna multiply by the sine of B in radians. So the pi over 180 converts it into radians. And then we use a sine instead of a cosine because the galactic latitude is measured with zero at the midplane as opposed to what our standard spherical polar coordinates are with uh, zero being along the z-axis. So that gives me a z-expression and I can actually plot that to figure out the distribution of stars above and below the midplane of the galaxy. That's not it. Here it is, Z gal. So uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I can jump this up to like 100 bins. I see a very nice distribution. And uh, something I'll call your attention to is that um, middle of that, not at zero. Interesting uh, fact. So I want you to think about that. Uh, I can do similar expressions for the x and the y coordinates. Let's take a look at those. Uh, the galactocentric x coordinates are a thousand over the parallax uh, times np dot uh, cos of b times pi over 180 times np dot uh, cos of l. That one's sort of oriented the normal way over 180. So that gives me an x. I'm going to be cheap. I'm going to copy and paste this into my y gal coordinate expression. So I'll do that, except there I change this to a sign, and then I have x, y, and z. Um, so if you're lucky, glue is in a state where a 3D scatter plot will work for you. Uh, mine engages in what we like to technically call in the business a software freakout. Um, so yeah, won't do that, but uh, we can get a nice uh, 2D scatter plot. That's still alive. And I can plot the x versus the y values. And I get a nice round distribution of points. So I take a look. You know, so it's sort of 2,500 in both directions uh, here. Uh, what's neat about this is I can actually, oops, I didn't need to close that. I could have just changed the axes. Uh, we can put the x on the x direction. And then I can put the z on the y direction. And you kind of get a nice sense of this. You see that, um, you know, this is, uh, we're, in, we're in a flat uh, disk of stars. And then what I want you to do is sort of examine where different types of stars are in this like x, z uh, space. 
So we could consider, for example, uh, where are the red club stars? So if I uh, actually, let's uh, unclick that. Let's uh, turn down the opacity a little bit so I can see my structure. Oh, that's the red clump there, so I can select that and hit return. And that shows me in this other plot where all the red clump stars are. They're not fully distributed there. And I can compare that to say where the high mass main sequence stars are. And those have a different shape and structure. So yeah, take a look at uh, how this works. It's uh, kind of neat uh, that we can relate different parts of the HR diagram to different structures in three-dimensional space uh, of our galaxy. Uh, so that should give you everything you need to get going. Uh, good luck, and uh, I hope everything works. All righty.